whatever human beings do changes the world. Uh, the question is whether projects uh, which are formulated to change the world in certain specific ways uh, can succeed. And one of the problems here, of course, is that there's no we. Um, who is we? I mean, uh, humanity is composed, the human species is composed of uh, billions of separate individuals with different goals, different plans, different values and different ideals. So, um, yes, they can all change the world, but not in the way that they anticipate. And do you think we can change the we? Uh, the we changes all the time, but there'll never be a, a universal we. There never has been a universal we and there never will be a universal we because human beings, although they have many things in common, have each of them, as well as taking them separately or collectively, uh, have uh, conflicting goals and purposes. So um, there can't be a we which has the same purposes because even in a single individual purposes and values conflict with each other. Now, you are famous for criticizing beliefs. Yes. What do you believe yourself? I try to avoid beliefs. Um, we need to have beliefs in contexts such as medicine or uh, the criminal law. We try to get the best beliefs we can based on the evidence. Uh, we all have beliefs about factual states of the world. Um, and we even have general views of... Uh, um, what human beings are like and what human history, how human be history is developing. But uh, I think the dependency on beliefs, uh, the idea that uh, a set of beliefs or a system of beliefs can somehow provide meaning to human life is a mistake. So I think we should economize on beliefs and do with as few as possible. Make them as simple as possible and as few as possible. And the ones that we have, we should be ready when they concern matters of fact in the world, when they concern politics, for example, we should be ready to surrender them, give them up when the world changes. So I think one of the great errors of the last 100 or 200 years is to uh, formulate a system of political beliefs <clears throat> which is not um, revisable by experience. So that if you have a project such as communism or universal democracy or the uh, European project and it doesn't work out rather than revising the beliefs about the project what people tend to do is to say well if we try twice as hard or if we change the circumstances or if we're more enthusiastic or more commitment or if there's a larger we or a more harmonious we we can achieve it that's nearly always an illusion it would be better to revise the beliefs so during your life have you given up on beliefs? No, no, because I didn't have any to start with of that kind. For me, politics is a series of temporary remedies for recurring human evils. Politics doesn't consist of a system of, uh, system of universal principles or of any kind of universal project. It's simply a, a series of temporary, provisional, partial remedies for recurring difficulties or evils. So um, uh, Thatcherism was necessary in, I believe, in uh, the late 70s, 80s and 90s, but it lasted 30 years. It achieved some useful goals, but it's no longer workable. We need something different. That's normal. The, but the problem of, one of the problems of late 20th century and even early 21st century thinking about politics is that um, there is an assumption that there is a single project or a single strategy or a single set of uh, uh, responses that can always work. Um, universal democracy, human rights, um, a European project or something of that kind. All of these should be seen as temporary expedients for diminishing or reducing human evils such as poverty or torture or persecution or genocide. There are different ways of stopping or reducing these evils. And um, if you fixate on one, you will normally, uh, one of these projects, you will normally come sooner or later to failure.